Today, I'm going to be talking about the rate analysis for tender projects in terms of what is it and what are the cost elements that make up the rate. And we are starting right now. So the rate analysis is the breakdown of the rate. If you take the rate of any item in the BOQ and you break it down, it's not just a single cost or a single cost element. The rate of any item in the BOQ is coming from a combination of rates. And these cost elements or these rates are materials, equipment, manpower, and subcontractor. So the submission or the combination of these cost elements, they make up the rate for any item in the project or in the BOQ. Because construction is a little bit different from going to the supermarket. When you go to the supermarket, you ask for something if it is 10, for example, so the cost of this thing might be five plus another three overheads and all of that and maybe another two for the profit. So it is just the cost of the item plus the margins. But in construction, it's not like that. It is different from the trading because as we said, you have the materials, you have the manpower, you have the equipment, you have the subcontractors, you have so many things that will help you to achieve this item. So the costs of all these things should be there in the rate of the item. So when I say, for example, the reinforced concrete is 1000, this 1000, it includes everything, the concrete, the steel, the formwork, the manpower, the shuttering people, the steel fixers and carpenters and the helpers. And maybe you will need a subcontractor also. So this is what we mean by the rate breakdown analysis or tender rate analysis. And since we have briefly talked about the cost elements, the cost elements in construction are material, equipment, subcontractor, and manpower, and sometimes others also. So these are the five cost elements that we have. I personally, I don't use this others because all the costs that I found in the projects are either material, equipment, manpower, or subcontractors only. So when we say cost elements, we are talking about these four elements that make up the cost rate of any item. Now let's start talking about these cost elements one by one, and I want to start with the manpower. So when we talk about the labors, we need to understand two things. How much the labors are costing us per month and what the labors can produce per month. And when we have these two numbers, we can understand the cost of the activity in terms of manpower. The next cost element is materials. And actually for the materials, you need to understand the cost of purchasing the material and the coverage of this thing that you have purchased so that you can get the activity cost in terms of material. And you will say, Ahmed, listen, don't talk like that, explain. I will do this. Now, let's assume that I have bought a bag of cement, okay, with a certain number or a certain amount. This bag of cement, how many, let's say, square meters of plaster this bag of cement can do? If I know how much the bag of cement and how many square meters of plaster this bag of cement can do, I can understand the cost of the plaster in terms of material. How much is it and what is the coverage? Like one bag of cement, how many square meters you can make with one bag of cement so you can understand how much is one square meter of plastering work in terms of the materials required. Of course, the materials for the plaster is not only cement. You need sand and you need water and you might need some uh, additives or something. So all these materials, you have to understand their cost and the coverage. And based on that, you can understand the cost of the material required for one square meter of plaster. The next one is the equipment. And when we talk about the equipment, let's take the scaffolding as an example. So for example, you will buy some scaffolding and you will spend a lot of money to buy this scaffolding. And this scaffolding will be enough for you, for example, to do this much of a square meters of form work in let's say four or five projects. So again, when you have the cost of the scaffolding or the equipment that you are buying, I am considering the scaffolding now as equipment. We will have the cost of the scaffolding, how much we are buying them and how many square meters of form work we can do with this scaffolding so we can understand the activity cost in terms of equipment as well. This will also include things like the depreciation and all because when I told you now when we took the scaffolding as an example, I told you that the scaffolding will be enough for five projects. After the five projects, I am assuming that the cost of these scaffoldings will become zero. So I am charging the full amount or the full price 
of the scaffolding that I am buying to five projects or this much of square meters of formwork. And quickly, if we are meeting for the first time, I am Ahmed Adel and you are watching Cost Engineering Professional. And here I help you develop the required skills and enhance your knowledge to elevate your cost engineering career. So if this is what you want, you can quickly subscribe. So we talked about manpower and we talked about material and we talked about equipment. Now the fourth cost element is called subcontractors because you as a general contractor, you will not do everything in the project in-house. You will need the help of subcontractors. So some of the activities, you might do half of the activity by yourself, by your labors, and you will buy the materials and you will bring the equipment. And you might also need for the same activity, you might need a subcontractor. So in that case, the subcontractor is also a cost element. And in some other cases, the only cost that will be for this item or this activity will be only the subcontractor. So we need to be fully aware about the cost of subcontractors that will come into any item in our project. Now, when you have this cost for each and every item in the project, item wise, you will have how much is the material, how much is the equipment, how much is the manpower and how much is the subcontractor. This will help you to understand how much is the total cost required for the manpower, not only in the activity, no, in the project overall. How much is the manpower cost? Or how much is the material cost? Or how much is the equipment cost? How much is the subcontractor cost? Why do we need this? Because when we add the margins, we need to keep these things into consideration because I'll not add the full margin. Let's assume, for example, a 15% margin. I will not just add this 15% to the overall cost. No, actually I can, for example, add 20% to the materials and maybe I don't want to win much on the labors, so I'll add only 10% on the labors and maybe I believe that there will be a high risk in the subcontractors for this project specifically, so maybe I will add 25% to the cost of the subcontractors and also the equipment I will add some percentage, so in the end I will get the selling price of the project and I will also get the total amount of the margin that I am adding to the project. And when this total margin is divided by the total cost, I will understand how much is the percentage, the overall percentage that I am assuming based on the four percentages that are different that I added to each of the cost elements. And in this video, I explained one rate analysis example in Excel, and I did that in the concrete works bill of quantity. So you can watch that. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I appreciate your valuable time. If you enjoyed, don't forget the thumbs up and you can subscribe to the channel and also you can support us by joining the channel memberships. And I'll see you in the next video.